The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Oh, good morning, everyone. Glad you are here joining us, whether you're in person or online tuning in. It's tough to follow that. <laughs> I was literally normal. This is like, how are you going to fall out? I'm like, I am not adorable and cute <laughs> like those kids. Uh, she's like, you better have a good joke. Um, we need Bob for that. <laughs> so here we are. How many people here this morning are fans of Christmas carols? Big fans of Christmas carols? Like you're going to, you love them? Um, how many would, how many are like, well, they got a season, right? You got like, if you do them like in the month of December, they kind of fit. Yeah, kind of. I'm like, give me about two weeks of Christmas carols and we're fantastic. Uh, we become pretty familiar with Christmas carols, right? The songs we sing, the, the songs our kids sing. Maybe you, as a parent, you've already been through numerous Christmas carols at uh, school Christmas concerts, right? They're, we're, they're ones that become familiar to us uh, until they're not. We lived for a number of years in the East Kootenays, a uh, little village in uh, our school was pretty small. So we didn't have a school music teacher, but we had a little commune in our community, uh, a bunch of people that have moved over from Europe, have set up a space, and they are gifted and talented. And so they served our community in a variety of ways, and one of the ways was that they taught music in our school. And so we were so excited. Our son was going to be in grade one in his first Christmas concert. And so his parents, is that first one you're pretty excited about. Um, subsequent ones you might not be quite as excited about. The first one's great. And uh, so we went expecting to hear the familiar Christmas carols. But they weren't familiar. Because as they came from Germany and Switzerland and various European countries, they brought with them European Christmas songs. And so our kids had learned these Christmas carols that we knew nothing of. But it's interesting because it caused you moments to pause and stop, right? I think there's times where things become familiar for us that we just default into routine. You know, we'll hear a song and we just carry on through it without thinking about the things that we sing. The familiar just becomes part of what we can default to. It was like this past fall. So, uh, Previous years, my son was going to school up here in Jensen Lakes at Sister Alphonse School. And so we had a routine where we'd drop my daughter off at school, and my son would come with me, and we'd drive up here, drop him off at Jensen Lakes, and I'd go to work. And then September comes, and he changes schools because he's going into high school, and so it's a new space and a new route. And, and uh, there were moments and times as I'm driving, and you just kind of get into the mode. You're thinking about the day ahead, the things that you've got on, on the to-do list, the things that are going on in life, and you just default to what is routine. And there were moments where I began to turn towards St. Albert Trail to drive up here to go to work, and my son would gently comment, Daddy, you taking me to school today? <laughs> right, that's what we need to do. Let's make a U-turn, and away we go, and we'll get you to school and make those things happen. But it happens for us, right? The things that become routine, the things that we become familiar with, lots of times we don't even think about. And I think that happens in life as we come into the Christmas season. We experience things. We hear things like our kids singing Christmas carols. We hear the message of Christmas and the story of Jesus, and it's familiar to us. We know it, we recognize it, and we just move past it. The familiar can cause us to go through the motions without paying attention to what we're doing or what's happening around us. And yet, in the Christmas season, we're called and reminded of the story of Jesus. God with us, Emmanuel. And yet, as we fill a room like this, full of people with a variety of spaces in life and circumstances and situations, whether it's the busyness of life, we were talking with some families last night at our Christmas lights extravaganza, talking about how we have the regular routines of life, the places we go, the things we need to get our kids to, the things we need to do, and then you add to it Christmas festivities or activities or planning family events or family meals, and it just increases, it ratchets up the busyness of life. 
Uh, maybe it's stress. Maybe it's financial stress that we're experiencing and feeling as we head into a Christmas season and you try and go buy a gallon of milk for $9 and all of a sudden things get tight and the stress and pressure begins to build. Maybe it's uncertainty with work and job situations or circumstances there. Maybe you're a post-secondary student and you are in the middle of finals and final papers and there is stress and busyness and your head is down and you just rush past all that's unfolding around you. Maybe you come into a season like this and there's been a season of loss and you're feeling grief. You're feeling that loss and you know there's a lot of emotions that are sitting just below the surface and Christmas may raise those and raise the intensity on those in some way and so it's just easier to put your head down. It's just easier to move past what's unfolding around you because you don't want to deal with the grief and the loss. There's lots in our lives that cause us to default to what is familiar and routine and miss all that is unfolding around us. And yet we're reminded by our kids this morning, we're reminded in this Christmas season about the message of Jesus. The message that declares good news has come and it's the promise of God with us. This Christmas season, it is a a message that has a message at its core that says good news is here. The promise of a child born for us. And it's one that we don't want to miss. And yet far too often and far too frequently, the routine and the familiar cause us to miss the good news. The good news of Jesus offered for us. It's a passage from Isaiah chapter 9 that you heard read um, in the little video before I started. But it's one that becomes familiar to us in a Christmas season. It's one, even as a staff team, our, our leadership team met this past week, and as we were sitting around the table, we would go through a, a passage of Scripture, a section of Scripture, and the Scripture was from Isaiah chapter 9. And as I started to read it, I'm like, we know this. And it becomes familiar for us, and we rush past it. But Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, reads like this. It says, those who walk in darkness will see a great light. It doesn't miss for me the fact that we are in a time, in a physical season, in this season where we are almost at the darkest day of the year, that there is darkness all around us. And into that physical darkness, into that physical reality, the message of Christmas, the message of Jesus for us, breaks in as a light into dark places. A light that offers us an invitation to hope, to experience love, to understand peace and know that joy is found in the one called Emmanuel. So often the thing that we become familiar with in life is trying to do life in our own strength, in our own ability, and what we can accomplish in and of ourselves. And we just default to that mode of I can do this, I can accomplish this, I can make it happen. And as we default to those things, we miss the invitation of Jesus to join him in the life that he created us for. Uh, The Christmas invitation for us, the Christmas invitation that we have as we declare, as we share, as we engage the message of Emmanuel is that in spite of all the things in this world that we've tried to place our hope and our trust in, the places where they've failed, where they've left us disappointed, where they continue to leave us disillusioned because they didn't answer that inner longing, we're invited to experience light breaking in Uh, The message of Jesus, the one Emmanuel, God with us, that satisfies because he is able. And so this morning, we gathered around and we hear our kids share the story and share the message through song and word about the promised child, the one who has come for us that is steadfast and unchanging and that we often rush past and we're invited today to reflect and receive good news of great joy. Because as we read in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. For a child is born to us. It's the thing that we can quickly rush past because he can be easily pushed off to the margins. And that is what has happened throughout history is that he often gets pushed to the side as we continue to run ahead, whether it's routine or what is familiar to us. And we're invited to pause and reflect and receive good news of great joy. 
That he is one who is a wonderful counselor, one that is not unfamiliar with the circumstances and situations of life. We'd read about it in Hebrews 4, verse 15, speaking about who Jesus is. It says, This high priest of ours understands our weakness, for he faced all the same testings that we do, and yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, and then we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. I don't know about you and the place that you might find yourself this morning or the situation that you may find yourself in, but that invitation to join with, to be joined by the one who understands the situations and circumstances of life and offers us a way to experience and know grace for all our situations and circumstances, the invitation to encounter Emmanuel, God with us, But he's also a a mighty God. He's also one who is capable and able to do far greater than we ever fathomed or imagined. He's the one who set the world in place, creating the heavens and the earth. And we read it in Romans 11, verse 36. It says, For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All All glory to him forever. Amen. For everything comes from him and exists by his power. God is not incapable of meeting us in our circumstance, in our situation. His invitation, the message of Emmanuel breaking in, light breaking into dark places, is that he is able and capable. And we're invited to receive and recognize the good news of great joy. But he's also an everlasting father, one who cares for us, one who wants to walk with us, to meet us as we journey life to those around you. But it all starts with a father who knows you, a father who loves you and cares for you and has purposes and plans for you, and he wants to sustain you in this life. The invitation to encounter Emmanuel, the invitation to encounter God with us as an everlasting father that will walk with us and care for us. And he's also the one who is the Prince of Peace. We live in a world and a time and a place where things are unsettled and peace seems far and distant. And yet the good news that breaks in, the light that breaks into dark places is that one has come who is the Prince of Peace. And it isn't peace like we might try and find in things and substance and um, accumulation of stuff in this world. But Jesus says this in John 14, 27. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give you. So don't be troubled or afraid. How often have we, in the rush, routine, normal things of life, tried to find peace in the stuff of this world? How often has it left us longing and wanting for something more? How often has it disappointed and missed the mark? And yet Jesus comes and he says, I am the one who brings you peace. Peace that the world can't offer you in ways it isn't possible. Peace that transcends understanding. And so we gather in this Christmas season and we get to hear our kids declare the good news of great joy that Emmanuel has come. The promised child for us that we would encounter it new and afresh and not just put our heads down into the routine and ritual of life, but that we would embrace the message of God's love lavishly displayed for us. And at times that requires us to to do things differently, to, to pause, to have fresh eyes, to look around us in the routine of life. And so the question I want to leave you with this morning, the questions that I want to put before you is, how is God inviting you to move past the familiar in this Christmas season? How is he inviting you to encounter him new and afresh in the middle of routine and the busyness and the stress and all the things that are going on in life? How is he inviting you to move past the familiar in this Christmas season? Maybe it's a starting point of joining in and reading in the Christmas story that you might find in Matthew chapter 1 and 2 or Luke chapter 1 and 2. That you would encounter Jesus, the promise fulfilled in the one that we call Emmanuel, the Messiah, the Savior given for us. That we would see those prophecies fulfilled, that we can learn to place our trust and our hope in him because he is one who is faithful. Maybe it's a move to to join us over the Advent season. So the season leading up into Christmas, we have been joining in with Edmonton House of Prayer in a a devotional series that they're putting out that we could join in to make space to pause to reflect on the message of Christmas, 
to reflect on the work of the Messiah in this world and in our lives that we would join in in making space. Maybe if you're new here and joining us, maybe the, the decision and the choice is to come and join us on Christmas Eve like Pastor Dan talked about, that you would join us on our Christmas Eve service as we celebrate again the message of Christ given for us, the declaration of the one who has come and is coming. Maybe if you're part of St. Albert Alliance Church family, maybe the work for you to make um, this season unfamiliar in some ways is taking the opportunity to step out of your comfort zone, inviting your friends and your neighbors to join us for Christmas Eve, to realize that we have the greatest gift ever given in Christ, and we want to share that with those around us, that we wouldn't just put down our heads and go through our routines and have fun with our families, but that we would recognize that we are ones who carry with us the message of Christ to the world, that we join him in being light in dark places, and we have the opportunity to continue to point to the promised child, the one given for us. There's a variety of ways that we can choose to move past the familiar in this Christmas season, to make space to pause and to reflect on the good news of great joy. Emmanuel, Christ with us. I want to pray for us this morning as we finish things off, and we'll have the band lead us in another song. But I want to invite you to join us as we continue to reflect on the good news of great joy, seeing Christ bring transformation and change as we encounter him as everlasting Father, mighty God, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, as he brings change and transformation into our lives because we can trust the one who has been promised. So let's pray, and then the band will lead us as we finish this morning. Jesus, we are grateful for your goodness and your faithfulness. Oh, the fact that we can place our trust and our hope on you because you are one who is faithful as we see lived by your life, as a demonstration of your life given for us, as a demonstration of you coming in as light breaking into dark places, that we can place our trust and our hope in you. And so Jesus, as we continue through this Christmas season and the last two weeks leading up to Christmas, would we not just rush past the songs that we hear, the stories that are told, but that we would pause to ref reflect and receive the message of good news of great joy. That is Jesus. May you open our eyes afresh to encounter you in new ways, in fresh ways this Christmas season, that we would receive and experience peace that transcends understanding. That we do experience you as a father who walks close with us. We experience you as a God who is mighty and able and capable to give far more than we ever fathomed or imagined. And that you would walk with us through all of life's circumstances as that wonderful counselor. We're grateful for your love and your life. Grateful for your promises fulfilled and the life that's found in and through you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.